Scalar Extreme Training. Today I'm going to show you how to install the Netscaler VPX onto your VMware ESX environment. Now whether you have a demo environment or a production environment for VMware ESX it's going to make it really easy and practical for you to get Netscaler VPX into your environment for testing purposes or for deployment purposes. And I think it's a really clever idea from Citrix to go ahead and beat agnostic in this in this area and release the VPX for both Citrix Zen server as well as ESX so the first thing you need to do of course is acquire the VPX uh, VPX from Citrix so go to citrix.com log into your account and you'll be able to download the net NS VPX for ESX when you, it comes out as a zip file. When you unzip it, you'll see that you have three files, a .mf, a .ovf, and a .vmdx, which is the virtual appliance here. What's important, of course, is the .ovf file. That's what we're going to use to actually import it into our ESX server. So what you can do is connect to your ESX, ESX server. I'm using the, the vSphere client. If you're using vSphere, you go ahead and go do that. Click on Deploy OVF Template, navigate to where your OVF is, click Open, uh, click Next, and uh, click Next again. Give it a name, I'm just going to give it, leave it the default, and then pick a data store. If you have an option for that, you can pick whichever you want. Uh, I'm going to have to just pick that one, and go ahead and click Enter. Now while this is deploying, it's copying the virtual appliance onto my ESX server. I'm so excited about this product, the Netscaler, I still am. And I just wanted to be able to show those people who either, either A, are forced to use only the VMware ESX infrastructure, or that's all they use, that's all they have, that's maybe all they know, um, that you can go ahead and deploy the Netscaler on your existing or a new whatever, VMware ESX environment. And we at Altercom, we support both uh, environments. So we're a Citrix partner as well as a VMware partner. And regarding the Netscaler, we are also supporting Netscaler on either platform, but also your physical Netscalers, whether it be Netscaler Classic or Netscaler MPX. So I've got another minute and 40 seconds to go. Rather than bore you with this, I'm going to fast forward to the end of the install. The Netscaler VPX has successfully installed itself on my ESX infrastructure. It took roughly four minutes. Um, first thing you want to do is go to your ESX install. If you right click on it, you can power it up or do a control B. If you click on the console tab, you'll be able to watch the Netscaler boot up for the first time. And it's going to look virtually identical to the VPX on Zen server or your actual physical device, the boot up. And it takes roughly 30 seconds or so. Now the first time it fires up, it's going to give you the nsconfig, it's going to run the nsconfig wizard basically, which is going to give you a chance to give the Netscaler its IP address, its NSIP, its management IP address, as well as NetMask and the default gateway. So we're going to do that now. Oops, there we go. I'm going to give it an IP address. This is going to be the management IP address. And the default 
gateway. Of course, in your case, you want to put in the right information for your environment. And then finally press 4 to save and quit. Now this is going to save the configuration information that I just gave to the Netscaler and it's going to continue the boot up process. And as you can see, Netscaler is ready. At this point, I probably can point my browser to the IP address, the Danis IP that I just configured. Now that the Netscaler has finished fully booting up, I'm going to click on my browser, fire up my browser, and go to my Netscaler over the GUI. So the default username and password is going to be nsroot, nsroot. Click login. If you don't have the Java runtime installed, this utility uh, is going to require it, so you need to install that. And generally speaking, your browser will help you find it and install it. So yeah, it's using Java so that it can be uh, this GUI can be run in any on any platform or on any browser. Now, the first time that the Netscaler runs, it's going to run this setup wizard. And here it gives us a chance to enter in the, the missing critical information on mapped IP or subnet IP. What's the difference? Once again, the mapped IP is going to be the IP address that the Netscaler will use to talk to your back end infrastructure, assuming that it's on the same subnet. And that's what I have here. If you have your backend infrastructure on a separate subnet or a different subnet, that's when you would select subnet IP and give it a subnet IP address. You need to have at least one of these configured for the Netscaler to work. Uh, this choose application step, I'm going to skip this step and click finish. Now at this point here, uh, exit the wizard, the Netscaler has been installed. I'm going to save the existing configuration and to finalize your setup, you need to go into the GUI under System, click on Licenses, click on Manage Licenses, and navigate Add. Navigate to where your licenses are. Here we go. License file will be copied to the Netscaler. Click OK. And then it's going to prompt you to reboot the system for these licenses cha licensing changes to take effect. So click yes. Uh, running configure has not changed, okay, great. Now the system is going to reboot. Uh, best practice is for you to close your browser down and if you are in your ESX environment here, your uh, vSphere client or your vSphere, you can actually see the Netscaler rebooting. When it comes back up, you can reconnect to your to your uh, browser, get into the GUI, and you'll be able to see that the licensing information has been updated and you're able to then start configuring your Netscaler. So I'm not going to go to that last step. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope that you can see um, a value for using the Netscaler in your ESX environment. It now allows you to leverage the Netscaler technology for your existing ESX environment and load balance and provide security and network acceleration for your applications and infrastructure that are, are running on your ESX or Zen server or physical environments. Thank you once again for joining me on N90X and I hope to see you on the next episode.